we're going to be discussing seven different relationship red flags in men. Number one is a lack of direction in his life or his career. A very important theme that I want you to take away from this video, if you take away anything, is people will do their relationship like they do their life. So if you're ever confused about what a, a guy's motives are, if you're ever confused about what he really feels about you, if you're ever confused about if he's just playing tricks on you and selling you a dream, or if he's really serious about you and wants to take this relationship serious, look at the signs of how he treats his own life. Okay, because there's a 99.9% .9 chance that however he goes about his own life, right, is going to mirror how he goes about his relationships. So you don't have to be confused about, oh my gosh, I don't know if he's lying to me or if he's serious. I don't know if he's really into me or he's not. I don't know if he really wants to build a serious relationship or if he's just playing me, right? All you have to do is get to know how he lives his life and his career and you'll get a very good understanding of how he treats his relationships okay okay right very important you need to see and it's not just about his occupation i'm talking about how he goes about his life and his career does he have direction does he have goals or is he just doing something for a paycheck with no end goal in sight Right. Does he have a five year plan? Very important. These type of things. Now, I'm going to give you an example of what a lack of direction or um, in life or in a career would look like. So let's say you went on a date with the guy. OK, you're out on this date. You're getting to know him. This is your first date. You're having a conversation with him. You're asking him questions about this and that. And so you start asking him, OK, so what do you where do you want to be in five years? OK. Like, where do you want your life to be? What do you what do you want to live? Uh, what what do you want to be doing for work? It, or do you want to be elevated in at your workplace? You want to be a CEO at that point? You want to be a CFO at that point? You want to be a manager? You want to be a whatever it may be, a, a, a regional uh, leader, whatever it may be. OK, where do you want to be in five years? And if he responds to you, you know, I don't really have any idea where I want to be in five years. I'm just kind of feeling things out. You know, I'm just kind of, you know, working this odd, odd jobs here and there. And I'll kind of just see where life takes me. I don't know where I want to live. I don't really know yet what I want to do. I'm still figuring stuff out. That's great for you because now you have your answer about what you are to him in this relationship and what the relationship will be. It'll be a whole lot of figuring stuff out. So if you want to get strung along on this long, pointless game and this long, pointless ride, definitely go along with the guy who tells you he's not really sure where he wants to be in five years. And unfortunately, as sad as it is, that is a lot of men. A lot of men have no idea where they want to be in five years or what they want to be doing in the next year. This is the trick is that most of these are focused on things that will be hard for most men to identify that would present them as a red flag. So majority of the time, they're not even going to have the emotional intelligence to mask these things because they're not going to see what you're really trying to get at. Do you understand what I'm saying? They're not going to see how it really translates to being a red flag unless they're super emotional intelligent. Some guys might be able to understand that and mask that and trick you. Okay. But for the most part, if these things are presenting themselves to you, he's most likely allowing it to slip through the cracks because he doesn't even realize himself that it is truly a red flag or a reflection of how he really feels or how he really thinks. OK, so that's why I say in his career, his life, because a lot of time when you start getting a, a guy talking about his career or his life, what he wants in the future, where he wants to be in his company or his business, whatever like that. A lot of guys don't realize that you're really asking the question about what do you see? Where do you see this relationship going? Do you have goals for a relationship, right? They just see it as the surface level question. Hey, do you, do you want to be working a better job in five years or what do you want to be doing in five years, right? A lot of guys just see it as that surface level. So when you're asking these type of questions or you're trying to get an understanding of where he wants to be in the next five, 10, 15 years, whatever it may be, and he's telling you how he doesn't really have any goals or direction and he doesn't really know what he wants, he's also telling you 
he doesn't know where he wants this relationship to go. Because like I said, guys are going to mirror the way they go about their life, right? Is the same way they're going to go about their women, is the same way they're going to go about their relationships, right? Because if he has direction, relationships are life. Life are relationships. You can't have one without the other. They're in and of each other. They flow in and of each other. So you're not going to have a guy who has direction and goals in his real life. And then all of a sudden, when it comes to his relationship, he has no direction, no goals, no nothing. Okay. Vice versa. You're also not going to have a guy who has no direction and goals in his own life. And then all of a sudden has direction and goals in his relationship. Even the guys who have direction and goals in their career and their life. And let's say they treat women bad. That's on purpose, right? They still have a goal in mind which is to use the woman, <laughs> discard of the woman, and move on to the next woman, okay? That's still that's still a goal. That's still direction. They just might not be outwardly saying that to you sometimes, but rest assured, I promise you, the guys with direction and goals know what they're doing, and they know why they're there. The guys with direction and goals are not going to um, invest their time or energy Unless they know in something, unless they know how it is paying them back. That's how they're hardwired. Okay. Vice versa, the guys with no direction and goals are not going to magically uh, be able to do that in their relationship with you when they don't even do that for themselves on an everyday basis. Number two is no attention to details in you or the relationship. So the question that I always tell you guys to ask to gauge a guy's interest. What character or personality traits unique to me do you like about me specifically? Any man who is truly in love with you knows exactly what it is that he loves about you. Which means if a man cannot tell you the things that he specifically loves about you, or even likes about you in the process of you guys like dating for a long period of time, then that means he is not serious about you or the relationship. He's either playing you to get something out of you. You know what he wants. He wants your squirtle. Or he's uh, selling you a dream, in which case for the same reason, to play you. Okay? I'm going to tell you the three types of answers that you do not accept if you ask that question. And when I say you do not accept, I simply mean the answers that you go, oh, oh, that is not good. You don't have to say anything. You just go to yourself. You just make a mental note. That is not good. That is not good. Now, if you find yourself in a situation in a relationship with a guy who's answering the question this way, now you need to be looking further into things because now you know you have some imbalances. So number one, an answer that is vague. If you ask him the question and he tells you his response is, yeah, you're just so nice, you're so kind, and you're so sweet. That is not at all specific or unique to you, which is why the question is structured in that particular way because it's meant to invoke I want answers in detail, right? And those answers should be specific to me, for me, okay? That's why the question is structured like that. Now, when you ask that question and he answers you with a vague answer, right? Most of the time, it's because he doesn't actually know the specific things that are unique to you, right? Which is why he's giving you a vague answer. He wants to make you feel good, but he doesn't know what he can even say. So he says something generic that could apply to his mom, his dad, his brother, his sister, his aunt, his cousin, his dog. Very generic things. You know what generic feels like. Okay. That one's pretty straightforward. Number two is an answer that you don't accept is an answer that has to do with your physical traits. Okay. Now your physical traits, obviously, if he says, well, you know, I like that you have such a great bum. I like that you have such voluptuous breasts. I like that your waist is so small. I like that you're, uh, you know, you've got such a supermodel face and supermodel figure. I like that you're a size zero, whatever it may be. Beauty fades because beauty is tied to what? Youth. So as you get older, no matter how hot and young and sexy you were, you are or were, you will eventually become older, still hot, still sexy, but older. 
The problem with that is that there will always be a hotter, sexier, younger woman. So if his love for you is attached to your physical traits, as time goes on, and your physical traits are no longer the top of the top of the top of the top of the top because there's a younger girl around who's taking that place, what's going to happen to your relationship? His head's going to turn into the direction of the newest, youngest, hottest thing. And you don't want that. You don't want that because you're in a world of trouble if that happens. Number three, this is the toughest one. This is why I'm going to try and be detailed as possible. Okay, I want you guys to follow along. Is an answer that relates back to himself. Okay, there's a couple reasons why this is so important. Okay, because a lot of guys in the process of trying to fool you and trick you, if you ask them a question like that, if they're a little bit smarter, they'll give you an answer that relates to them, thinking that you'll think that that's acceptable. So, for example, you ask him the question and he'll say something like this. Oh, I like that you do so much for me. I love that you take care of me. I love how you treat me. I love how you're such an amazing person to me, right? It will always somehow relate back to your treatment of him towards him, okay? The problem with that is that his answer, which is his reason for loving you, is not actually related to anything about you. It's related to what you do for him. Here's the problem, though. That means, theoretically, and quite literally, anyone else could come along and treat him that same way, and he would love them just as much. That is not unique to you, your treatment of him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because what you're trying to understand and grab a hold of is if he is with you specifically because he wants to be with you specifically, not because you were the closest girl in town, not because you were the girl across the street, not because it's convenient, not because he works in your area, not because, you know, you're the cutest girl at that was at the bar that he seen the night when he met you. No, 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 no. There are unique qualities and character traits about you that make him want to be with you and not the person across the street and not the person that he meets at the bar and not the person that he meets at work. Because in the, in the span of your relationship, he's going to meet other people. He's also going to meet other people that are interested in him and that he might, you know, think are interesting. There has to be a reason, right? Or a uh, uh, um, a sp- There has to be a thing or qualities that he's grounded in about you and the relationship that remind him even when things aren't going well, even when, you know, uh, you're going through some rocky uh, roads in the relationship, why he's with you and not with someone else or why he's with you and why he doesn't just leave you for someone else. Right. There needs to be something grounding him to remind him of why he's in that relationship, which is why it's so important That you understand if your man or the guy that you're interested in has attention to detail about you and the relationship. And this is where you have to be paying attention, right, to as the relationship is progressing. Do you hear him talking about the things that he really enjoys about the relationship? Do you hear him talking to you about the qualities that he appreciates about you? Do you hear him even able to pick up on little subtleties about you or nuances or things that or quirks about you that you do or don't do or the way you act or the way that you speak, right? Because that's a good sign that he's actually interested in you. And if he's not doing that, right, if he doesn't have any attention to detail, he can't describe to you any things that he particularly likes about you. He can never really put his finger on what it is about the relationship that he really enjoys, I can promise you that's a major red flag. And that's one of those red flags. Like I say, the guys aren't really in control of that because you guys always talk about, oh, well, a guy can just lie. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, go talk. If if there's a guy in your life that you know is a player, right, that you know he's not serious, he just sells girls dreams, I want you to go ask that guy that question. 
what character traits or personality traits are unique to me do you like about me specifically? Be for real with yourself. Do you really think any player guy is going to be able to pinpoint any character traits or you or personality traits unique to you that he likes about you? No, because he doesn't care. All he cares about is getting access to your Squirtle. Why would he be paying attention to your personality or character traits? There's no reason for that. And when you ask this question, it's such a nuanced question. I guarantee you majority of guys will be caught off guard by it because most girls would never ask a question like that. They just want to focus. That's why you're smarty pants for being here with me, taking advice from me because I'm a man. But most of the uh, other women will just sit around and be like, oh, well, you tell me I'm pretty. You tell me I'm beautiful. You tell me you like me. I'm just going to take everything for what it is and never dive deeper. I'm just going to assume that everything is great because you tell me you love me and tell me you care about you and you tell me everything's amazing. Number three is moving too fast. I'm going to get in deep on this. A lot of you are confused by what it means when you meet a guy who is moving too fast. The world and society and movies and TV shows have convinced you that the men who truly know what they want know it immediately. And if he meets you and sweeps you off your feet and realizes in the moment that he sees your beautiful face that he wants to make you the mother of his children and his wife, that that is what true love really is. That his ability to see you and to for it to be love at first sight is what true love really is. And when he really knows what he wants, he'll just be able to see you and know that you're what he wants. That sounds great in a smut book. That sounds great on what, Pad? That sounds great in a Disney princess movie or a teen drama. Okay? In reality... When he sees you and falls in love with you at first sight, what's actually happening is he's seeing your beautiful, big, voluptuous booty walking around. He's seeing your beautiful, voluptuous breasts bouncing around. He's seeing your amazing, tight body walking around the party. Okay? He's seeing how tight your dress is. That's what he's actually falling in love with. Let's just be all the way for real. Let's not let's not play around. Like let's be for real. Okay? Not to say that guys can't be interested in you and your personality and that you're not an amazing woman and that you don't deserve to be cared for and you're more than just an object or, you know, something to look at. But what I am saying is there's no way to know how amazing your personality and your character is. When he literally just sees you from a distance. There's just no way. That's not possible. Okay. Like, and I know when I say it out loud, it sounds so simple and so obvious. But a lot of times we all get lost in this idea of like, no, he sees it in me even without knowing me. He just, he can sense it in me. I'm a spiritual person, guys. I'm a spiritual person. If you guys listen to me enough, you'll hear me talk about aura, manifestation, the law of attraction, all that good stuff. So don't think that I'm not a spiritual person where I feel like you can feel someone or sense their aura or things like that or be attracted to their to their aura, right? But what doesn't happen is you don't know a person simply by just seeing them. There's no people and human beings are so complex. There's so many different sides to a human being's personality, who they are, where they've been, what they've experienced. There is no possible way you could actually know them just by looking at them, which means there is no possible way you could actually make a decision on them being your life partner just by seeing them at a distance. Okay? And the problem with that is the world has convinced you that the guys who are moving too fast are actually the guys that you should be looking for. And when he's moving too fast, that's a good thing. When it's actually a major, 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 major red flag. How many of you, tell me in the chat, let's be honest, where it's like therapy here. How many of you have been with a guy 
whether it be a talking stage or a situationship, where at the very beginning, he has so much interest in you. And I'm talking about so much like he tells you how much he loves you. He tells you how amazing you are. He's just like, I want you to be my wife. I want you to have my babies. Everything is so intense at the beginning. And then after about three months, he falls off of a cliff. And when I say falls off of a cliff, I mean his interest in you seemingly goes from day to tonight he seems to be all in for you over the top interested in you in love with you and then in the span of about three months sometimes even less than three months two months a month a couple weeks all of a sudden he seems like a completely different person what tends to happen is at the beginning we project our feelings right or what we want someone to be onto them, right? Because when you don't know someone, you can't really actually fill in the holes of their personality. So what do you do? You fill in the holes of their personality based on what you want their personality to be, right? Because you just have to use your imagination, which is why usually someone is the most interesting, intriguing, and exciting to you at the very beginning because you don't actually know them So you don't have anything to base their personality off of. So what do you do? You get to project their personality onto them. You can take all of your favorite character traits. You can take you can take some character traits from your favorite Wattpad story. You can take some character traits from your favorite teen drama. You can take some character traits from your favorite smut book and you can put them all on that man. Same way the guys, right? All the things that they've experienced, they can project onto you as, oh, this is who you are, right? And so they get into a relationship with you or they try to build this relationship super fast, right? Without actually getting to know you. And then over a period of time, they realize that, yeah, now that I'm reading, meeting the real you, I don't get a chance to imagine what your personality is anymore. I actually have to accept who you really are. And most of the time, When you're projecting a personality onto someone, you're going to project the perfect person because why would you project a flawed person? But unfortunately, all of us as humans are flawed, right? We have things that are great about us. We also have things that are not so great about us. So what happens over time in this three month span that everyone's going to is one of two things. Either he was playing you the whole time and like now the gig is up. He's tired of, of playing the same game. And now you're seeing his true colors or he genuinely thought he was interested in you. But the problem is he didn't actually know anything about you. So his interest was in the idea of you. And after three months, he's probably gotten to know you better so he can no longer have just an idea of you. But what he realizes is that he's not that interested in the idea of you. Either way, it's a red flag simply because you end up with the short end of the stick because in the span of the three months, right, your squirtle gets used, you give your mind, body and soul away, and now you're left with nothing. (laughs) Okay, so either way, it's a red flag, whether he's doing it because he's trying to play you or whether he's doing it because he's truly not understanding of how real people work and that you actually have to spend time with someone in order to learn them and grow with them and understand them, it still works out against your favor, okay? So it's a red flag either way. Number four, inconsistency in his life. The way he goes about his life is the way he's going to go about his relationship. So if you see a lot of inconsistencies in the way he goes about his life, You should know that's going to translate to a lot of inconsistencies in the way he goes about his relationship. So let me give you an example of an inconsistency in a guy. If you ask him, how many jobs have you, you know, like had in the span of like a year or so, or let's say you ask him the question I said to ask him, you know, in the next five years, where do you want to be? And he says, you know, I don't really know where I want to be. And, you know, to be honest with you, the past couple of years have been a whirlwind for me. Like I've kind of went from this job to that job, just kind of floating around trying things. And you ask him, you know, why did this, this situation end with your last job? 
oh, you know, you know, the manager, your manager had an issue, you know, just, uh, it just wasn't working out. Okay. What about the job before that? You know, you know, I had a couple coworkers. They just, they just weren't for me. I didn't really get along with any of the co what about the job before that? Oh, you know, the, the, the pay wasn't really right. You know, people just weren't really right at that company, you know, things like that. Excuse me. Right. And you start to notice a pattern that everywhere he goes, things don't work out. Right. Or he starts talking to you about all these friendships that he's had and he tells you, oh, you know, you know, me and that guy, we're not really friends anymore, you know, because, you know, he's just not the type of person I want to hang out with. Oh, you know, me and that yeah, no, I don't really talk to that guy anymore. He's just not, you know, not the type of the type of guy I want in my life. Oh, you know, me and him, we had a disagreement, you know, da, 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 da. or with his family. Yeah, you know, me and my mom, we're not talking anymore. We got in a huge fight. Me and my brother, we don't speak anymore. We don't do this and that. Da, da, da. Right. When you start seeing that everywhere he goes, other people are the problem, okay? His coworkers are the problem, his manager is the problem, his friends are the problem. Everywhere he seems to go, there's always a problem, but it's always someone else, right? That is inconsistency, okay? It's inconsistency because he always seems to float from situation to situation, from friendship to friendship, from career to career. There's never any consistency in his life. But that should tell you that there's also not a lot of consistency in his personality. Because what happens when you're a consistent person is that, yes, you'll repel some people. Yes, some people will be uninterested in you. Yes, some people won't align with your values or thoughts or way of go going about life. But what will happen is you'll also begin to attract people who are like-minded of you, right? You'll also begin to attract people who think like you. You'll also begin to attract people who have the same views as you. And in the process of you being a consistent person, those people will stay in your life. Now, when you're flip-flopping this direction and that direction, and you're a very inconsistent person, sometimes you're attracting people, sometimes you're repelling them. Sometimes you get along with people, sometimes you repel them. And it creates a very grind gears type of personality where everywhere you go, you're always grinding everyone's gears. There's no group of people that can stand by you, right? And be like, no, I get, you know, he's got some character flaws. I get, he made some mistakes, but I love the person that he is because the one thing human beings aren't is they're not perfect. But what makes it easier to love someone is when they're consistent, because after a while you grow to be able to understand the person, who they are, what their character flaws are, and you understand if you can work with that and how to work around and with that. Okay. You will never be able to have a sustainable long-term relationship with a man who is inconsistent. And I'm not just talking about inconsistent in how many times he'll take you on dates. I just even mean inconsistent in the person that he is inconsistent in the way he goes about relationships, right? It kind of goes in line with the lack of direction and things like that, because it's very hard to build a good relationship with a guy who's inconsistent because he can't just tell you what he wants and how he wants a relationship to be. And you guys work towards that because he doesn't know what he wants. He's here one day. He's there one day, right? It will be impossible, right? For you to work towards being the type of, uh, partner that he needs. If what he needs is changing on a daily and weekly basis, do you understand what I'm saying? Right? Because as we begin to learn each other in relationships, men and women, right? As we learn each other in relationships, we gain a better understanding of what do you need? Okay. I love you. I care about you. I want to be with you. What do you need in this relationship that would make me a better partner to you? In the process of learning your partner, you'll get a better, more detailed understanding of that. The problem is if that person is inconsistent, you'll never get a clear understanding of how can I best serve you as a partner. And so it makes it impossible to build a long-term sustainable relationship when you don't even know what that person requires in the relationship because they can't even describe it to you because one day they're here, one day they're there, one day it's this, one day it's that. And you can never be the right person. 
You can never have the right relationship. Everything is a mistake. Everything is always going wrong. Number five, a man who is being very unintentional in the relationship. Okay. Now it kind of goes along with inconsistency, but a man who is unintentional, right? Because remember, life is about balance. You don't want a guy who's moving too fast, but you also don't want a guy who's unintentional about the relationship. Because if he's not trying to move it forward at all in any direction, then you know he's not really there for the right reasons. Okay? Because you need to have, you need to be in a relationship with a guy, right? Who is trying to move the relationship in some sort of forward direction. Okay? Uh, baby love says I'm done with men. I'd rather get my money. He's not going to say, oh, you know, um, I'm trying to get to know you. I'm trying to get to know you. And so we're building a relationship so we can become this and grow to this and work towards this. He's just going to say, yeah, you know, let's uh, kind of let's just see where it goes. Let's just kind of feel it out. You know, I don't have any real plans for you. I, yeah. You know, you want to go on dates? You know, I just I don't know if I can plan that far ahead. You know, like the way he's going to go about you and the relationship building the relationship, making it better for you, increasing the quality of it is going to be very unintentional. And you're going to find yourself, this is a this is a key. So I know you guys want specific examples, right? For example, if you're talking to a guy, let's say you meet him on Hinge or Bumble, whatever. You guys love dating apps. Yay, dating apps. You meet this guy on Hinge. You start talking to him, you're texting him, you're Snapchatting him now. Some of you guys are addicted to Snapchat. You Snapchat him now, keeping a nice little snap streak going. You send him Instagram memes. He sends you Instagram memes. You're keeping a nice little meme back and forth going. And you guys text as well. And you're sitting around waiting for him to ask you on a date. And you're like, when is this guy going to ask me on a date? Until you finally bring it up three, four, five times. Until you guys finally go on the date simply because you brought it up so many times. And after that, you sit around waiting for the next two, three weeks for him to ask you on another date. And you're sitting there like, look, like I thought the whole point of this was for us to go on dates. And he's like, well, I didn't know that you wanted to go on dates. If you wanted to go on dates, then you should have just asked. You should have just asked me. You should have just told me that you want to go on dates. Huh? Huh? The whole point of this is that you want to get to know me. Of course, I want to get to know you as well, but like you're the man and you're interested in me. So you ask me out on dates for us. to. Go. I'm just talking about heterosexual relationships, guys. I don't know how every, everyone else does it. Right. But for the most part, it's like, you know, I want to get to know you. Let's go out on dates. I want to see you here. I want to see you here. Right. When you're with a very unintentional man. He's going to say things. Well, you should have told me that you wanted to go on a date. I didn't know that you wanted to go on a date. Brother, you didn't know that you wanted to go on a date. This is where you have to start. When you just start listening to people when they talk. Okay. Just start listening to people when they talk. If a guy says something like that to you, just go, oh, oh, you were waiting for me to tell you that I wanted to go. Oh, okay. I met you on Hinge and you're waiting for me to tell you that I wanted to go on a date. Okay. Actually, you know what? Actually, my number changed. So just go ahead and block this one and never text or call this one again. Also, my Instagram changed. So go ahead and remove and delete that one and never contact it again. Also, my Snapchat changed. Please never contact that one again either. That's what you should be saying. Because you're wasting your time. If you're spending time with or talking to a guy who is actively telling you things like, oh, well, I, I was, uh, I didn't know that you wanted to go on dates. You should have told me that you wanted to go on dates. You, did you guys meet on Hinge to like shake hands and like, and like play, play pool on iPhone? Let's be for real here. Okay. So you don't want, you don't want to be in a relationship with a guy who is unintentional because you're one, you're going to be chasing him around trying to get him to be interested in you, which is a waste of your time. And two, you're going to be very frustrated because you're going to be the one constantly trying to push the relationship forward. But what's going to happen is one of two things. Either he's going to capitulate, which means just agree. And he's going to, you know, allow the relationship to get pushed forward by you. But what's going to happen is in the future, after three, four five months, he's going to resent you for forcing him to be in the relationship. And he's going to do start doing all types of weird stuff because of his resentment or. Right. 
you're going to be pushing the relationship forward and forward and forward, right? And he's going to be like, nah, that, nah, that's, I'm not really interested in you anymore, right? Because it's, it's going to lose, he's going to become demotivated to chase because you're the one doing the pushing. And so you'll find yourself in a situation where you're doing all the pushing, he's doing none of the pushing, and he's in the car actually laid down while you're pushing the whole car. Okay. Either way, it's not good for you. That's why either way, it's a red flag. Number six, we have unsustainable qualities and habits. This is why I told you guys, it's so important to write down your wish list. It's so important to understand what you want. And man, it's so important what you want your relationship to look like. Because when you understand what you want your relationship to look like, right? When you're meeting these guys, you will know if the way they go about life or their personality is in line with even what you want your relationship to be or look like. Right? Because we all have different personalities and character traits. Those all play a role in how our relationships go. Okay? So, for example, if you meet a guy, let's say you go on a date with a guy. And you're dating him, dating him. Let's say you go on three, four dates. Now you spend some time at his house. You guys get into an argument. And in the span, in the process of your argument, he like starts raising his voice. I'm not just talking about raising his voice. He's like, you in B, I can, you a in ho, I can't believe you do this, you a motherfucking, like, let's say, let's say you, you were like liking some guy's pictures or something like that, you know what I mean, or he caught you like texting some, some guy, you a in ho, I can't believe you did this, you motherfucking, you a, you a S, you know, I don't want to say all the curse, curse words, you know what I mean, like, and he, like, he's just going off, calling you all types of names, he's up in your face, he's yelling at you, he's punching the wall till his knuckles are bleeding, he's going crazy because you messaged uh, a guy in front of him and you've been on like four dates, okay? That is an unsustainable habit or quality. Now, obviously, that's extreme, so it's easy to be like, yeah, of course, that's a red flag, but I want you even on a lesser scale to identify when you're dating guys or going on these dates with with guys, be honest with yourself. Be like, okay, as I'm growing, as I'm learning him and understanding him better, uh, this quality about you is honestly unsustainable for a relationship. There's, I can't, I can't envision a healthy, sustainable relationship if that's how you're going to respond to things or if that's how you're going to go about life. If you go over to a guy's house and it's disgusting. And you know you can't, you don't want to be in a relationship where you're with a partner that lives like a like a pig, literally. You need to quickly reevaluate your that that person and whether or not you should be even investing your time and energy into that person. Because the reality of it is you're not gonna meet that person and all of a sudden they're gonna become a neat freak. No, they're still gonna be a pig in one year, in two years, in three years, when you're married for 10 years. So if you know that that's not in line with the type of relationship that you want, save yourself the time. Don't waste your own time hoping that you're going to see something magically different. Learn people for who they are. Don't try to change them into something that they're not because they never will. Which is why it's so important in the process of learning someone, you identify the qualities, right? that they have and the habits that they have and whether or not that is something that will work for you in a relationship or not work for you in a relationship. Does that make sense guys? Or are you guys confused? Right? You don't want to be with the guy who has what you would consider unsustainable habits. You have to be with the guy who you can truly envision has habits and qualities that you see would work in a long-term sustainable relationship. Obviously, I'm not saying that every guy you meet has to be absolutely perfect. And if he ever makes a mistake, then, you know, you should never be with him because people that guys that make mistakes are the worst. No, what I'm saying is there's a difference between having character flaws and having quality traits or habits that probably will not work out in your favor for a long term serious relationship. If you're okay, and that's why I say it's very different for each individual. If you're okay with the guy who screams and yells and punches the wall, maybe that turns you on. You like your Wattpad stories and your smut. And like, you're like, oh my God, a guy that punches the walls when he's mad. He's so passionate. If that works for you, cool. Do, do you, you, that, that, then that doesn't consist of an unsustainable um, habit or quality. If that doesn't work for you, if that scares you, if that frightens you, right? 
if you're not interested in that, then that would classify as a red flag and an unsustainable quality or habit. Are you guys understanding? So it's unique to you. That's why I can't tell you specifically what your unsustainable quality or habit would be because it's all determined by what you're willing to or not willing to deal with, which is a function of your own personality. If you're a super dirty person, you would, you like to leave things like a pigsty. Maybe when you meet uh, your pigsty uh, boyfriend, it won't be so shocking and such of a turnoff. You might be like, oh, I love living like a pig too. We can live like a pig together. Okay, no wash dishes, clothes everywhere, underwear in the sink. And the last one we have here is accountability. You will never be able to build a sustainable relationship. This is true for everyone. Unless you are with someone who is accountable. I should say the red flag is no accountability. If he has no accountability, you're going to struggle. And you're going to struggle a lot because you're going to be chasing him around like Sherlock Holmes, like the sheriff cop in a big city, trying to get him to acknowledge his wrongdoings and mishaps, right? Trying to get him to acknowledge how he's treated you poorly, trying to get him to acknowledge what he needs to work on or fix or what he hasn't been doing wrong. And you're going to be fighting a losing battle because without accountability, when he has a lack of accountability, he's never going to be able to admit, be honest about, or apologize for the things that he done, that he has done or is doing or the way that he is treating you. And so you're on, you're honestly just going to feel like you're going crazy because you're going to ask him to do things. You're going to tell him, you're going to tell him how you feel about things and nothing's going to change. Because the only way for things to change, the only the only way for him to treat you better is for him to have the accountability to be like, you know what, what I did was wrong. You know what, what I said was wrong. You know what, how I acted was wrong. I need to do better because I care about you and I care about this relationship and I want to be a better partner to you. That is accountability. Okay. If he doesn't have that, you will, you'll never be able to get anywhere. Because you're always going to have issues in the relationship. It's never going to be perfect. But in the process of you guys having issues in the relationship, each person, not just him, also you, but each person needs to be able to take accountability for the things that they did wrong or the ways that they hurt their partner. Because sometimes wrong is all about perspective. And at the end of the day, even if I don't see what I did as wrong because it's me, and I have my own perspective at the end of the day, if you're my partner and I love you and I care about you and I care about this relationship, if you see what I did as wrong, that's what's important. And I need to take accountability for how what I did made you feel as opposed to defending. Oh, but I didn't see it as that way. Doesn't matter what I saw. Doesn't matter how I felt because it's about how you feel about what I did, what I said, how I acted. Right. That takes a lot of accountability. So if you're in a relationship or you're dating a guy and you realize he has very little accountability, major, right? You should probably just check out right there. There's no point. And so, for example, these are one of the, some of the ways you can understand if a guy has accountability or not. This is why I always tell you guys very important. And I know a lot of you guys don't want to do it because you're like, oh, but I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to mention it. I don't want to think about it. When you go on these dates with these guys, you need to be asking them about their exes. There needs to be a dedicated, long sit down period of talking, of conversation, where you talk to a guy about, at the very least, his most recent ex. And you have a crystal clear understanding of why the relationship ended, how long it lasted, what were the things that were working, what were the things that weren't working what led to it falling apart and where they stand now. You need to have a crystal clear understanding of all aspects of that previous relationship because what will happen is you'll get a very good sense of if this is someone, if this is a guy who can take accountability for things or not because the reality is, the reality is in the span of a relationship, if someone is describing a relationship and they only ever describe the relationship from the vantage point or the perspective of, you know, I was just such a victim of this person. I sat on my chair and didn't do nothing but be amazing and sweet and kind and respectful and caring. 
and my ex did so much wrong to me. Whether this is a guy or a girl, this includes you too, anyone that you meet. My ex was such a horrible, disgusting person while I did nothing but care for them and do right by them and forgive them and do all of this amazing stuff for them. My ex, my ex, my ex, my ex, my ex. She's the devil. She's the worst. Right? You need to be running away fast. And this is why I say these red flags are so subtle because the guys aren't even realizing what they're selling, what they're telling you by telling you this, right? Because someone who truly has accountability, truly, when they're describing their ex or their past relationship, they will be able to be honest that, yeah, they might have done some things wrong, but there was definitely a lot of things that I contributed to the relationship not working. Because the reality of it is they weren't in a relationship by themselves and I wasn't in a relationship by myself. Not everything they did was just out of the blue. Some of the things they did were in a response or reaction to things that I did or said. If there is no acknowledgement of how a relationship takes two people to work at it in order for it to work or in order for it to fall apart, then you know, you know very quickly that you're with someone who doesn't have accountability. One of the best ways I always say to ask someone um, about their ex is to literally just be like, okay, um, so in your last situ- last relationship, what are some of the things you don't want to see or happen again in your new relationship that happened in your old relationship, right? That's a great starter. The reason I say that's a great starter is because it forces them to kind of reminisce on where they've been and what the relationship was and acknowledge why it might have not worked out from their perspective. Now, after they answer that question, you can go on to ask, okay, well, how do you think you contributed to like the relationship or like why it didn't work out? Do you know what I mean? And you can just start flowing um, in the direction. And the reason I say that's a really good opener question is, oh, um, you know, what are some of the things in your past relationship that you do want to work on? Like you don't want to see in your new relationship is because if someone doesn't want to answer that, it doesn't make sense if they're on a date with you, because if you're asking someone, Hey, what are some things you want to avoid in this new relationship? Because obviously your old relationship didn't work out. It wouldn't make any sense if they, they wanted to be in a new healthy relationship, but they didn't want to tell you the things that they, they, that didn't work in their old relationship that they don't want to happen now, right? You have to approach these questions from the standpoint of, I want us to not make the same mistakes as your previous relationship or my previous relationships. So the more we understand about each other's previous relationships, the less likely we'll be able, we'll um, be making those same mistakes, which is good for both of us because it means we have a better chance at having a good um awesome, amazing relationship. And anyone who is truly invested in you should be in agreement of that. When you pose it that way, hey, we're learning about each other's past relationships so we don't make those same mistakes. We can work towards something and not repeat those patterns. If someone who's trying to build a relationship with you and they're like, no, I don't want to talk about that. No, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want us to not make the same mistakes. I, I want us to not talk about it so that we can probably make the same mistakes. Then it doesn't make sense. Now you know something's off, right? Because if he's denying talking about his ex because he doesn't want to share with you the things that didn't work out so that you guys can not have those same mistakes, then does he not want you guys to have a successful relationship? If he doesn't want you guys to have a successful relationship, then what is he here for? You see how that works, right? You can ask the question and you can phrase it in a way where it's about learning and understanding him so you can be a better woman for him. Play into his ego. You don't always, not every question has to be so like, you know, I'm asking you this because I want to know if you're a red flag man. Just play into his ego. I want to learn about you and I want to make sure I'm not making the same mistakes as your ex. Can you tell me some of the things that didn't work out in your past relationship? 